Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Goslings of Bermuda, the taste of Bermuda. Today on Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda, we get recaps from tournaments throughout New England. Plus, we take a look at the upcoming Goslings Invitational in Bermuda. We meet a female amateur golfer who is just as comfortable playing with the men, plus a whole lot more, next on Golf Destination. Welcome to Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm your host, Meredith Gorman. The Goslings Invitational has been taking place on the island of Bermuda for over 50 years, and it continues to be as popular as ever. Recently, we spoke with Malcolm Gosling and tournament director Robbie Thompson on the 2018 version of this professional and amateur event. You know, the Goslings family gets behind this tournament, has done for more than 50 years. Uh, we're very proud of Bermuda. We love to show off the spirit of Bermuda, get the pun. Um, yeah, with Gosling's rums, but also the friendly spirit of Bermuda from the Bermudian people who just love to have um, visitors come down and experience a little bit of paradise. And the golf is great. The courses will be in tremendous shape, uh, both at Belmont Hills and Port Royal Golf Course. It's following on the heels of what I would consider probably the number one uh, Gosling's Invitational from last year. The 2017 was tremendous. The weather was great. It was operated so beautifully with the help of our tournament director, uh, Robbie Thompson, and the NEPGA that assisted him. But this year, it's looking to probably be even better than that. I mean, the quality of players, both on the pro side and on the amateur side is incredible. We have Matt Parziali, um, who was just low amateur, at the US Open at Shinnecock, um, incredible. He's our defending amateur champion. Herbie Aikens, who made the finals of the Mass Am this year. We have Jason Thresher, who won the Mass Open for a third straight year. And I think that's uh, never been done before. Um, so it's just incredible, plus there's a slew of others. Our goal is to host 51 professional players and 51 amateur players right here on the island at Port Royal Golf Club and Belmont Hills. Looking forward to a strong amateur field this year, uh, vying for world amateur ranking points. Uh, our first and second place finishers last year moved up 391 spots in world amateur ranking points. So there's a huge bump for them and, and it really entices a lot of these nationally ranked players to come to Bermuda and play in this championship. We're looking forward to an increased purse this year for the professionals thanks to our partners Bermuda Tourism, Gosling Castle Partners and Cobra Puma Golf. 2018 Gosling's Invitational is just going to build on what was already a very successful tournament before we took it over and a successful year that we had in 2017. We're just gonna keep building uh, along with the NEPGA that handles the operations, myself and our team here on island. We look forward to a fantastic championship this year. Thanks guys. Last year at the Gosling's Invitational, the tournament featured a runaway winner in perhaps the most competitive field in the tournament's history. Let's see how it played out. Daniel Gaunt stood on the first tee at Belmont Hills in the third round of the Gosling's Invitational with his trusted caddy hoping to expand upon his three-shot lead on a course that he had never played. But judging by his drive, he was unafraid as he ripped it down the middle. That would set the tone for his round as he would fire a four under 66. David Byrne would continue his fine play with an impressive four under 66. Kamiko Smith would shoot one under but would still lose three shots to the leader Gaunt. The leaderboard now showed Gaunt extending his lead to six shots as Smith tried to keep pace. PGA Tour veteran Brad Adamonis put together the round everyone was anticipating from him with a five under 65. David Lawrence and his trusty caddy local Ian Page made a move with another 65, while past champion Kent Fukushima had his second day in the 60s. Daniel Gaunt would be difficult to beat on the final day, but at Belmont Hills during the Gosling's Invitational, Anything can and usually does happen. 
The final round of the Goslings Invitational was again played under blue skies with warm temperatures. The tournament was now Daniel Gaunt's to lose, but after the spring he had on the TP Tour in England, the chances were slight. David Lawrence did make a run with an impressive 4 under 66 with this birdie on 17. His playing partner David Byrne would also have a birdie on 17 and finish at 68 for the day. And we might as well show you the third person in the group, Kent Fukushima, who also made birdie in the group and finished at 69. PGA Tour veteran Brad Adamonis could not post back-to-back -back rounds in the 60s and finished with an even par 70. Kamiko Smith would just miss this eagle putt on the 12th, thus ending any chance of a significant run. On the amateur side, Matt Parziali would shoot 69 good enough to be low amateur in the tournament and it would top it off with a birdie on 18. But the story of the day and the week was Daniel Gaunt, the greenskeeper in England who would shoot an eye-popping 16 under for the tournament. Good enough for the win and an eight shot victory. Here's a look at the final leaderboard. Gaunt's impressive finish overshadowed a great final round by the UK's Henry Smart who shot 64 and moved him into second place. Champions and PGA Tour veteran P.H. Horgan III's 64 catapulted him into a tie for fifth along with Kamiko Smith and Jason Thresher. It is also worth mentioning Bermudian Daniel Augustus fired a closing round of 7 under at 63. After the round we spoke with Daniel Gaunt, the 2018 champion of the Gosling's Invitational. It's been uh, it's been fantastic. Um, obviously, I've been been home in England greenkeeping. Um, just started that about two months ago. So I've come over through winning the Order of Merit on the TP Tour. Um, I got an in invitation through uh, Malcolm Gosling, and all expenses paid to come and play. So I, I couldn't couldn't knock it back. Um, yeah, and, I, and then obviously I played the Pro Am, enjoyed Port Royal, and come out after Port Royal and had a had a drive around here, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm, pretty happy with both courses so um, I played fantastic for the whole week um, I can't complain uh, my wife's been waiting up so yeah she's she's pretty happy all she said is how much <laughs> so uh, yeah she knows how much we're winning she'll have that sorted out and uh, by the time I get home she'll have it spent or she'll have it hidden away somewhere so I can't find it <laughs> um, yeah it's been it's, it's good so at least the, the kids will have it oh well, we'll all have a, a great Christmas now so it'll be good the low amateur of the Gosling's Invitational was USGA mid-amateur champion Matt Parziali, the Brockton, Massachusetts firefighter. Matt is exempt to the 2018 US Open at Shinnecock, the 2018 US Amateur at Pebble Beach, and has an expected invite to the 2018 Masters. Matt used the Gosling's to help him in his preparedness for 2018, which looks to be pretty special. The Gosling's Invitational this year was a great experience. It's one of the best events I've ever played, a lot of fun, Great competition. I, I was able to make a lot of birdies all four rounds, which is which is fun to make birdies. But I had a few too many mistakes. I made a couple double bogeys, and I made a, a few too many bogeys each day to kind of get myself out of the the top of the top of the leaderboard. But I hit it well. I played well. I was in control all week, and this is the first time I've played competitive golf in maybe a month or two. So be able to come here and get going for the next four or five months getting ready for the Masters and the US Open. This was, a, this was a good week to get going again. Malcolm Gosling and his entire family and team were delighted on how the tournament came off. The dark and stormy is kind of the unofficial cocktail of golf. Uh, it's a sport that is close to my heart and my dad started this tournament well over 50 years ago. It's a tradition. It's one of the best events on the golf calendar internationally and it's definitely the best uh, event on the golf calendar in Bermuda and it's just something that the oldest company in Bermuda should continue and I'm just really pleased to see that the eighth generation of Gosling is involved with this tournament and it just gives me great hope that this thing will continue well beyond my years. You could not have had better weather. The golf courses both Port Royal and Belmont were in absolutely perfect condition the field this year was unbelievable. It's, we have players from the UK, Italy, Canada, USA, the Caribbean, and of course, Bermuda. The fact that 60 and under won this tournament just shows the quality of this field. It's just getting better and better every year. 
and can't wait for the 2018 Gosling's Invitational. For Golf Destination, I'm executive producer Steven Eichhorn. Coming up, she is winning every major tournament in New England, but she's about to do something that no woman has ever done before in Massachusetts golf. Plus, we'll find out what any PGA member can be called champion when Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda, continues. Welcome back to Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda. I'm Meredith Gorman. Shannon Johnson's fine play both regionally and nationally has her recognized as one of the top female golfers over 25 years old in the country. This Thorny League Golf Club member now wants to see how she rates with the men. I grew up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, kind of a remote part of the uh, part of the country, but uh, I loved it. You know, it's, it's very similar season to Boston. I started playing when I was about eight. Um, it was kind of, I wasn't like a fall in love with golf type of thing. Basically, my sister and I went out with my grandparents every day. Um, and they just, they played golf every day. So we would just go drive a cart, have fun. The first tournament I played in, I won by like 10 strokes and, and I was kind of hooked ever since. The Mass Golf puts on what we call the Baker Tournament, so it's usually on the Cape, it's a two-day tournament. Uh, we get some college kids that will play in that. Uh, so I won that by a few strokes, and then the next tournament after that was a New England Am. And this was the first year I ever competed in that, so was able to win that uh, by a few shots. Mass Am's tough, just, it's just a long kind of week of golf, it was really hot here and got to play a fantastic golf course in George Wright. And um, you never know in match play, that was always tough. Uh, the first year I played in it, I'd actually played here at Thorny. Uh, made it all the way to the final, so got to see a lot of this golf course before I became a member. And, but, you know, match play, you can just have a little off day and someone beats you. And, you know, it's always great to win, you know, match play events. And I was really, really excited to, to be able to do that this year. A couple people from the mass uh, from mass golf actually reached out and they said, "Oh, you should look about playing in the in the mid am." And I was like, "Oh, I was kind of just like, oh, that's just a guys' tournament." They're like, "No, anyone can play." And so as long as you meet the handicap requirements, which I, I easily did, and I there was one tournament, one site that worked out in my schedule down at Sandwich Hollows, and I said, "Why not?" I arrived thinking <laughs> maybe she has the wrong golf course she's playing at. Uh, but it was fun. I mean, the guys always treat me with a lot of respect and, you know, that's the cool thing about golf is it, you know, brings everyone together. Best of luck, Shannon. The New England section of the PGA Championship hosted their tournament at Quidnesset Country Club and Warwick Country Club. An invite to the PGA Championship was on the line and Don Coyne tells us who came out on top. The 98th New England PGA Championship played the first two rounds at Warwick Country Club and Quidnesset Country Club, both right on picturesque Narragansett Bay in Rhode Island. The Battle by the Bay, this was an amazing section championship. We had one of the strongest fields in the country. We just saw a great play uh, for three days from our, our 160 New England PGA professionals down here in, in Rhode Island at Quidnesset Country Club and Warwick Country Club. It's just been a great three days. We saw a battle down the stretch between Jeff Martin and Rich Barbarian. Quidnesset hosted the final round where only three golfers started the day under par. Rich Barbarian three up on Jeff Martin starting the day and it stayed that way until the par 4-6 and Martin was in the fairway. I had a, actually a good number. I had 122 back into the wind and I knew I could at least throw up by the pin and um, uh, be careful with it, you know, not to come up short. So um, I hit a really good shot there. I just got lucky it went in. Add in a barbarian bogey and a three-stroke lead was suddenly gone and it was a tie at the top. Veteran Kirk Hennefeld needed Burge to stay close and close was the word. Martin with the birdie on seven to take the lead. The seesaw ride was underway. I mean, it was like every other hole is like a new leader. Every after after the sixth hole, every other hole was like, all right, he's leading. I'm leading, you know. And you you, you try to get comfortable, but you can't. As Barbarian came back with a birdie on the eighth, and Martin missed his chance to stay in the lead. Matching birdies on the par five ninth. So we were tied with nine to go. The thoughts going through my head all day were, um, I might win, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna win every other hole. It was a new thought, it seemed like. 11, the roller coaster continued as Barbarian had a bogey on the par 5 11th. And then, 
after Barbarian Birdie on the 12th to tie it again. He had tree trouble on 13. A little unfortunate, but you know, I it's what I it's what I get and trying to trying to do too much with that shot. A double bogey and he was down two. But lucky enough, I have two shortish, a shortish par five and a short par four that, that I hit uh, good tee balls and, and were able to make some birdies and, and get them back. Um, coming to those two short holes, you, you, I had to make birdies on those two holes because I, I figured he would have. And like I said, luckily enough, you know, things didn't go his way on those holes and they went mine and I ended up, you know, catching up and even taking the lead one hole after those. Burberry in his second straight birdie and Martin trouble on the par four 15th and then disaster on the 16th. Yeah, I tried to hit a shot that I probably shouldn't have. I tried to just, should have just stomped on a six iron instead of trying to cut a five iron in there and I got a little ahead of it and hit a bad shot, so. That led to a double while Barbarian was struggling to save a bogey. Just lucky things went my way the last few holes. I didn't know uh, where I'd even be dropping and then I got up there and they said they found it and lucky to have found it and I got it close to the green which would have been better than taking that drop zone and I got a, a decent chip on it and um, made a 15 footer and that, that one was, that was probably the biggest one. Sometimes those go in and sometimes they don't. He had a two shot lead with two to go. Martin a birdie on 17 to get within one. Uh, it was good to come back with a birdie after making a mess of 16, so um, I at least forced him to make a par at the end, so. As the storm clouds gathered, after a brief rain delay, Barbarian with a par putt to seal the deal and a one-shot victory. You know, we were back and forth all day. Some of it was good golf, some of it was bad golf, but uh, you know, Rich made that great putt at the end and uh, I get through everything I could at him over the last two days and he, uh, he played some great golf. I, I capitalized, I made a couple putts and uh, you know, I just I hung in there and, and squeaked it out. The Battle of Narragansett Bay, we've seen, we've had two phenomenal facilities and we could not have asked for more gracious hosts. On behalf of the 1,100 associates and members in the New England section, Rich, I want to congratulate you on your on your victory. Thank you. And here you go, sir. Thank you. And uh, Rich is no stranger to hoisting the trophy here in New England. This is his third uh, section championship, and he's won the national event. He's been the player of the year at the national level, so he's just an amazing golfer. We're just so proud of him. Once again, Gosling's is a, a huge supporter of the New England PGA and our PGA professionals, and, and the, the uh, winner of our section championship gets an invitation to the Gosling's Invitational this December. I never played down there. I, I, I've wanted to. Yeah, it might, be, uh, it might be something that the wife and I have to, have to attend. That'd be cool. For Golf Destinations, I'm Don Coyne. Rich Berberian failed to make the cut in the PGA Championship, but he's still exempt for the Gosling's Invitational, which he plans on taking full advantage of. Up next, we see how both the Rhode Island and Massachusetts amateurs played out when Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda, continues. Hi and welcome back, I'm Meredith Gorman. The Massachusetts Golf Association partnered with the City of Boston to host the Mass Amateur at Franklin Park Golf Course and George Wright Golf Course. Don Coyne files this report. The 110th Mass Amateur being held at George Wright, the city course earning raves. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, Franklin Park Monday and then over here for the rest of the week. They've done such a good job, the City of Boston, with these two courses. So um, I think it's a, we'll probably be coming back in the future. And defending champ Matt Parziali should know good courses. The defending U.S. Mid-Am champ having played in the Masters and U.S. Open this year, tying Loam at the Open. In the round of 16, a rematch of last year's finals against Matt Cowgill. I played with Matt the last two days. Uh, he's a great kid. I love playing with him. We had a lot of fun all three days, and uh, I was lucky to play well this afternoon. And would wrap it up on the 16th. Three and two. Patrick Frody took on medalist Jackson Lang for a chance to play Parziali in the quarters. Frody jumped out to the lead on the back nine, and he would wrap it up on the 17th. Uh, feels great. It came down to the wire kind of on 17, both matches, and it's been not very easy. It's been pretty windy, and it's kind of tough to just stay patient out here because these tough holes keep coming at you hole by hole. Just good to advance. And once you're in the dance, the top 32, that's all That's all that matters. Anything can happen once you're in match play, so. Yeah, get to dance with Matt Parziali next. Great, looking forward to it. <laughs> Eliminating defending champ Matt Parziali in the quarters in the morning, three and two. That was, so, that was a lot of fun, very mentally exhausting. I got in and I was very tired into the clubhouse, but 
It was a lot of fun. We had a great match. Beat Parsi Alley and the medalist, and on your way to the final, that's not a bad trip. Yeah, it's been an exciting last couple of days. In the other semi, veteran Herbie Aikens fell behind one of the young guns, Andrew O'Leary. He was tough. I just tried to hang in there and see what I could do, and I, I tried not to get too down. It was, I'm not going to lie, turning you know, to the back nine down three was, was a little discouraging, but started to chip away and got a little momentum and made a big birdie on 12, which kind of got me going. I said, all right, we, we still got a chance at this, so it was, it was fun. It ends on 18. Aikens, who survived the quarterfinals in 22 holes, certainly had a long but successful day of golf. Feel good. A little tired, but great. I'm uh, looking forward to resting up and getting ready for tomorrow. It's going to be exciting. In perhaps the tallest final ever, Patrick Frody took the early lead on Herbie Aikens. I came out of the gate pretty hot. Um, I think I was four up through eight or nine, and uh, Herbie came right back. He made a few birdies on the back nine. He played really well. Fought back, and you know, I was always down, so it, was, it felt like I was in a hole always trying to get out. and. It wears you down at the end, you, you get tired and maybe a little frustrated because you know you're trying to trying to get it back and he's such a good player, he, you know, he didn't uh, he didn't let up. Even when he would get in a little bit of trouble, he did a great chip shot and followed up with a great putt. So And it ended on the fifteenth hole of the round, thirty-third of the day. It's a great feeling. I haven't I haven't won anything too meaningful in a long time, so this is a really good feeling. Finally happy to uh, win this uh, state amateur. This is my last year being an amateur. Now Don ventures to the Ocean State to field his report on the Rhode Island Amateur. The 113th Rhode Island Amateur being held at beautiful Ledgemont Country Club in Seekonk. The goal, to make the top 32, to advance to match play, but still some bragging rights for those at the top of the scoreboard. Tough to catch Davis Chatfield or Matt Broom for medalist honors. Chatfield started the day with a one-shot lead on Broom and both went low. Yeah, I played well, made some birdies, and um, yeah, I was happy with, with today's old. Chatfield shot a 64, and he literally needed every stroke if he wanted to become the medalist because Matt Broom was on fire. A birdie here on 13, but only good enough for a 64 to match Chatfield for the day. Davis taking the medalist honors by a stroke. Oh, nice, yeah. <laughs> What does it feel like to be the medalist? Um, it's cool, yeah. I wanted to definitely wanted to shoot a good round today and have a chance at it anyways, and glad I got it. Claudio Sukumnuth was the 32nd seed, needing a birdie on a playoff hole the day before to knock five others out just to get into match play, and he took advantage against Chatfield. Match play, anything can happen, so you never know, yeah. Not often Johnson and Wales has a chance to beat Notre Dame. On 18, a chip for a gimme par. Davis Chatfield needed this to go to stay alive. The curse of the medalist at the Rhode Island Am continues. Extremely disappointing, but I mean, I can take a lot of positives out of the, I guess, the first two days. Um, yeah, I just didn't, didn't have it today. But not often that Johnson and Wales beats Notre Dame. Ha, um, hey, it's golf, so anything can happen. On Thursday, quarter and semifinals, first match of the day, Eric Marchetti wins the ninth hole to go up five at the turn on Sukumnuth. The 16th, it would end. Marchetti closes him out. A second trip to the semifinals, and hope, hopefully uh, going to make it my first trip to the finals. It would mean a lot. You know, I put a lot of hard work over the years you know, into playing golf and competing. But that would not be as Marchetti dominated by Jake Bauer in the afternoon, seven and six. Bauer on to the finals. The 36-hole final at the 113th Rhode Island Amateur at Ledgemont had the usual twists and turns. Despite the lip out, Jake Bauer led Matt Broom by one hole after the first nine. I woke up and I just took today as if it was any other day, just like going out playing 18 or I mean obviously 36. Bauer with a bird on 12 and after a half on 13, Bauer birdies on 14 and then 15 to go up by three holes. After, especially after how I hit it Monday, um, I didn't really hit it good Monday and if someone told me I'd be in the finals with a two up lead with 18 to go, I'd probably laugh at them. But Bauer dominated after lunch. In total on the day, 12 birdies and an eagle in 29 holes on his way to winning the 113th Rhode Island Amateur, eight up with seven to go. It just sort of hit a little bit of a soft spot just for all the people I knew who like helped me and stuff. Thanks, Don, and congratulations to the winners. Up next, we'll meet a Bermuda golf ball extraordinaire. 
when Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda, continues. Welcome back to Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm your host, Meredith Gorman. How many golf balls have you lost in your illustrious golf career? Well, if you lost them in Bermuda, our next guest undoubtedly found it. Hi, it's Keith, the golf ball extraordinaire. When you need them balls, Pro V's, TaylorMade's, TP5's, come see me at the hill, number 440 on the, at the Belmont Hills. Golf balls, everything you might need. And I've been doing it for like 15 or years. Almost my whole life I grew up doing it, then I stopped, then I took it to another level. And it, it's amazing, it's amazing. And I don't do no porn or water balls. No porn or water, all these are literally found in the trees. In a week, I average, like I said, seven to 10,000 balls, and uh, out of that, about 3,000 be good. Mondays, I tend to go out on a Monday or a Wednesday, and gather balls. Mondays I'll do a full day. But any afternoon I'll go get balls and you'll find a ball like this here to the average eye. It might be pristine, but it might just have that one little blemish in it, but I wouldn't sell it. Trash, trash, they use it for practice. But it's amazing, the amount of balls that I find in a week. We've got two other guys at the other courses that look for balls, but they tend to drink a lot and they don't go into the trees, so they dash to the um, French. But I will go deep. And you know, with the new equipment, the balls go deeper. We have all my throwaway balls from the under the good ones that I was out. Anything that might be damaged, slightly damaged or bruised, I tend to throw it away. I only keep the pristine balls, and this is accumulated in two weeks from all the courses in Bermuda. And having knocked off, I, on a general week, I might find six to 7,000 balls, and out of that, a third of them will be good. I'm ball extraordinary. <laughs> Now, Jeffrey doesn't retrieve balls in ponds or creeks, nothing but the gently used for his clients. Thank you for joining us this week on Golf Destination. Join us every day on our social media channels. There you will find unique content and updates on all of our social media platforms. Turn on notifications on your Instagram so you can see our posts the moment they are up. Plus, watch old episodes commercial-free on our YouTube channel. Visit golfdestination.tv for all of the links. We hope you enjoyed the show and don't forget to add us to your DVR or cloud library so you'll never miss an episode even when you aren't at home. Thanks for joining us for Golf Destination. I'm Meredith Foreman. Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Goslings of Bermuda, the taste of Bermuda. The Preserve, New England's only four season sporting community. Avidia Bank. Delta, keep climbing. Presented by Sociable, original social media programming.